Good evening, everybody. My name is Corey Rosen, and you're listening to The Story Podcast. Today, I have on a super awesome guest. Before we get into that, if you'd like to support my show, please be sure to check out the shop. We have some uh, merchandise coming out, and if you would like to support the channel, you can buy stuff there. But with all that said, we have on a incredibly awesome guest, Miss Catherine Britt. When you look at modern country music, you can identify a diverse range of styles that have evolved from the traditional roots form. From pop country to bush ballads, acoustic folk-leaning songs to rousing country rock and the polymorphic blend of Americana, one Australian artist that can lay claim to all of these strains is Catherine Britt, a songwriter who has already packed a res respected and highly acclaimed career into her first two decades as a recording artist. From Newcastle to Nashville, Catherine has made the move to the home of country music at just 17 years old. It proved to be a brave decision that gave her immeasurable experience as a musician, insight into the machinations of the industry, and a contract with the legendary RCA Records. Upon returning to Australia in 2009, Catherine set about recording her debut full-length album, Dusty Smiles and Heartbreak Cures, the first of five consecutive albums nominated for Album of the Year at the CMAA, that is Country Music Awards of Australia, the accolades don't stop there. Along the way, she has received five Golden Guitar Awards, the CMA Global Artist of the Year Award in 2010, and six ARIA Award nominations for Best Country Album. The critical acclaim for her albums and reputation as a performer has seen Catherine tour and perform with some of the biggest names in music, including Sir Elton John. Don McLean, Casey Chambers, Brooke Dunn, Alan Jackson, Brad Paisley, Don, Dolly Parton, Kenny Chesney, Steve Earle, Guy Clark, Chris Isaac, and Keith Urban. And not content with just carving out an enviable career as a songwriter, performer, and recording artist, Catherine has also been involved in the wider country music community as a radio broadcaster on ABC Saturday Night Country Show, TV host, on CMC's alt country program, and most recently as the editor and owner of Rhythms, Australia's premier roots music magazine. Life has always had a way of throwing curveballs, both good and bad, and over the few years has seen Catherine fight and win a battle with breast cancer and give birth to two boys. Over the years, being an artist has meant different things to her, and she's had different goals. Catherine's goals from when she was a young girl, was to make money from music, which she's been able to do and is extremely proud of. At different points of her life, she's felt the pull of wanting to be famous and chasing that dream, living in Nashville, and then realizing that that wasn't what she wanted to do. It's constantly changing, but Catherine's ultimate goal has been fulfilled, and she can never see herself not making music. It's what she's always done, and it comes naturally to her, and she feels like it's what she was meant to do. That and being a mom. Catherine, how are you doing today? I'm good. It's quite an intro. Thank you so much, Corey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. I'm really excited. By the way, she's also coming to Lancaster, PA, August 21st to Telus 360 at 6 p.m. So be sure to check that out. It's going to be a riot of a, of a time. So tell me, what was it like as a kid? What got you inspired into music? When did you f first pick up a guitar? What was it like? Yeah, I, I guess I was always singing as a little girl. Um, you know, I, I started out quite quite young, um, just sort of singing around the house and singing along to, you know, Disney movies and things like that. Uh, and it wasn't until I was about nine, I saw a film called um, Coal Miner's Daughter, which is an autobiography film of um, uh, Loretta Lynn's life, of course. And um, for whatever reason, that film just inspired me and um, changed my direction. You know, I fell in love with country music and uh, then I wanted to start writing songs and, you know, chase that dream from then on. So from about nine, I guess I kind of picked up the guitar and started writing and, you know, singing um, country songs rather than Disney songs. So it kind of went from there. And um, then I, you know, joined a local country music club in Newcastle where I'm from and uh, started getting up and playing each week there and, and then sort of meeting people and, and it kind of grew into eventually making my first recording, uh, which was an EP um, in 1999. Uh, I was about 14 at the time and, and went in and, and made a record and then released my first single here in Australia, which was um, 
a top 10 hit, which was kind of the beginning of everything for me, I guess, and how it all started. That's awesome. I'm curious, what is it like to do country music in Australia? Yeah, it's quite different, I think, to America because, you know, having lived over there for six years, I, I understand, you know, uh, the extreme um, following that Americans have for country music. You know, you have quite a huge support system there. It is it is truly the most popular music. Um, whereas in Australia, it, I wouldn't say country music is anywhere near as, as popular. Um, and it's kind of viewed differently I guess than it would be in America you know it's um not as cool I guess as as it is there and um I don't know it's just it's a different world I mean there's this kind of new country that's coming through now that that is getting a lot of you know attention and and you know I'm kind of part of that sort of scene I guess and and that's really great because you know anywhere we go and tour in Australia we get really great crowds and um there is a big a big fan base there you just got to kind of dig and find it you know whereas in America I feel like there's there's country fans everywhere you know mm. and that's what I love about it you know I love that you can you can find um people just like you you know in, in any any state and, and any part of America so I really love that about the states and they're, they're true fans you know like when you play a gig you they're so appreciative and so into you know the music and um yeah it's it's wonderful I really have missed touring America you know I usually come over once a year at least and it's been a couple of years thanks to the pandemic so mm. I'm pretty excited to get back yeah that's awesome so back to you uh, as a, as a child what was it like when you first started to gain notoriety what what was that process like what's the story behind there uh yeah it was it was weird I guess because you know I did it because I loved it um I didn't really expect to get anything out of it I guess um and when I started getting attention for it you know as a little girl I think that I really thrived off that and, and loved that people loved what I was doing you know and that really pushed me to keep going and um keep following in that in that path I guess and I really encouraging parents too that were very supportive um so I was very lucky in that way because I'm the youngest of four. So my three older brothers were grown up and, you know, started their lives essentially by the time I was doing music and my parents said I had some freedom, I guess, to, to take me around to gigs and, you know, um, encourage me to do it. So I was pretty lucky and, um, you know, I got into it pretty hardcore from a young age and, and, you know, a lot of my friends and people around me just really supported that. So I was, I was pretty lucky, you know, I think I was set up, in a good way to, to su succeed, I guess, you know, because you need that support to make it work. So Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. So what was yeah. one of your first songs that are, uh, it was your first album, right? That really pushed, launched your career. Yeah. Uh, so the EP had a song on it called That Don't Bother Me that, um, you know, was really pretty big here in Australia. Um, it's actually been recorded quite a few times you know overseas especially in Europe I'm not sure why it's been recorded a few times in a few different languages and, and it's been a big hit over there as well uh, by other artists covering it and um, so that kind of kicked it off for me but the album my debut album um, which was recorded in 2000 I think we released it in 2001 so a couple of years later that really kind of launched my career for me um, and I think it had a lot to do with, you know, it was a full length album. Uh, I was a bit older. I was 16 at the time. And I got offered to go out on my first tour, opening up for Casey Chambers, which was a, you know, a major tour all over Australia, uh, playing to country crowds. And um, that really helped. I left high school essentially to, to, to do that. So it was a choice. I guess that's when I chose music, you know, as a, mm -hmm. as a lifestyle over school and over everything else. So that was a pretty major switch for me. And and then, of course, um, I was pretty lucky, of course, too, that Elton John discovered my record and, and you know, got behind me as well and then took my album over to Nashville and, and got me signed to RCA. So that kind of started that whole, you know, part of my life. You know, I moved to Nashville at 17, not long after I released the album and, and kind of went on that journey for a few years with them and, and made another couple of albums with them as well. So Too Far Gone and Little Wildflower, was my second and third album they were both made with rca so that's incredible it's inc uh first off that elton john would find stumble across your record and then be yeah. like this girl is great she's going so she can go somewhere 
Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's very strange. I, you know, I still think about it. And I remember at the time he was, um, part of me, he was getting behind a few different artists. So he was, you know, encouraging me and Joss Stone at the time as well. And another artist called Ryan Adams. And he was really kind of talking the three of us up all over the world. And I was pretty proud to be a part of that. You know, I, I don't know why he chose me or, um, yeah, you know, he's always been good to me and we ended up doing a duet together, a country duet that was a single in the States on the radio and um, got in the top 40. So that was pretty great. And, um, you know, he's continued to stay in touch every now and again. I know when I got sick um, a few years ago, he reached out and wrote a, wrote a letter and, you know, um, we caught up when he came to Australia on tour and it was really nice. You know, he's, he's a really good guy and, and has a lot to do with my success and, um has you know really helped me launch my career so I'm very grateful for that that's that's Alan John is one of my biggest cats of all time uh yeah one of my biggest pretty influencers awesome. is is yeah and uh it's <laughs> incredible um so you moved <laughs> to America what yeah. then so I guess then I was based in Nashville for a few years, uh, about six years actually all up, so 17 till about 23 um, age. And uh, I moved back to Australia in 2008 because my uh, my visa ran out and um, I was applying for a green card and uh, I, I came back here to kind of figure out what to do next and, you know, work on another album and I actually met a, another singer who's uh, over in Nashville now, um, married to another artist, Kelsey Ballerini, but uh, Morgan Evans and I met and, and we dated for a few years. And then, so I decided to stay in Australia and make a record here. So that kind of, you know, um, made that decision to not kind of, not to kind of base myself in Australia rather than America and go back and forth this way rather than the other way. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, I found, I found better. I really was quite homesick and, you know, I was on my own over there. I didn't have any family. Um, and I really struggled with that. I think, you know, I never really felt at home totally in Nashville because I didn't have that, you know, background. I didn't have any family to fall back on. So for me, it was, it was easy to base myself out of Australia where, you know, I already had a career, um, that, you know, I could tour and, and make money and, and, and play to crowds. And then I could kind of keep building that American side of things, you know, from here. So that's kind of how I've continued to do it, you know, ever since then um, for the last few years. So by the pandemic, it's, it's worked, you know, pretty well so far. And I, I love it. You know, I love coming and touring America. I love that I have that option to do that. Um, a lot of Australian artists don't and I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I bet it's really hard to break into the American uh, music scene, especially the country yeah. music scene coming from Australia, because it's so yeah. oversaturated. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, when I was releasing music over there, uh, we we had three top forty singles on the radio, and it was great. You know, um, it was you know a lot of money put behind it. You know, major label stuff, and you know it was a wild ride. And and I think you know when I was over there the three singles I released um you know Gretchen Wilson broke with Redneck Woman which no one could compete with that um and then my second single uh, um Taylor Swift broke with um her first single Tim McGraw so you know I I felt like I was the odds were against me <laughs> you know yeah, well, just a little bit <laughs> The females don't break very often in America. And I, I had the two probably the biggest things that happened for females, you know, at that time. Mm. So, you know, it's always really tough. And, you know, I, I I always question whether I really wanted to be a part of that machine, you know, or if I wanted to just do my own thing. And I found doing what I do now so much more fulfilling. And, you know, I make records, you know, I produce them myself and, you know, I, I, I kind of am in control and I still have a fan base without having to make music just for radio or just for a certain reason like I make it because I love it you know rather than for um people or for a thing so I, I find that more fulfilling and I feel like I can sleep better at night knowing why I create music I guess and um I've been really lucky to to you know have this career now for over 20 years and um you know that was my goal as a little girl was to make money out of music and make this my job um and I'm I'm one of the grateful, you know, one of the, the very few that, that gets to say that I, I can do that. So it's pretty great. 
Yeah, that's it's it's awesome that yeah. that you could come from Australia and be accepted into America and all and have still all your roots in Australia. I'm curious, how does <laughs> your voice is clearly Australian? Uh, yes. <laughs> but your singing style sounds almost as if you were from Nashville or Texas. How, yeah, yeah. How does that work? Well, is that something you had to work on or? Not really, because I always grew up singing, you know, along to, well, Disney, you know, it's very hmm. generic, you know, it's almost, it's not American, but it's just like, there's no accent. So I grew right. up singing without an accent because, you know, you have Australian artists here that sing really Australian, you know. Um, which is the opposite again, you know, like they sing with a really ochre, really Australian accent. And, you know, I've never done that. So I've always sang with a bland accent. And then when I started listening to people like Loray Lynn and Dolly Parton, you know, naturally I started to add a little twang just from hearing it so much. I think when I wrote, I just started singing slightly like that. Um, living over there too, you know, I got quite a, um, oh, sorry about that. Um, I got quite a you know, pretty thick American accent when I was living there because, you know, 17 to 23 are some of your most influential language years. So I really picked it up, you know, and even now when I get really tired or drunk, I start to roll my R's and start to talk a little bit American, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or if I spend any time over there, I start to, like, pick it up again. It's, like, ingrained in me still, you know, and it's only because I've been living back here for so long that I'm I'm back into that you know, my natural, obviously my natural accent. But, you know, when I sing, sometimes I, I do sound more American, I guess, just because of my life and how it's been and and the journey I've been on, I think. And, um, you know, I try to not sound too anything, too American, too Australian, you know, do the Beatles thing and just sound mm. international, you know. And that's kind of always been my goal is to not have an accent of any kind if I can, if I can avoid it, you know. Um, and sometimes songs just sound better with, with a bit of an American accent, you know, they rhyme better. And um, that's what I grew up on. That's the sort of music I'm singing. So it just comes natural, I guess, to do that. That's awesome. I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, what is one of the things that you are most expecting when you come back to America or most excited for? Uh, the food. I mean, when I first came <laughs> over there, I hated the American food. Like it was so full on and I remember being really sick, but now I love it. I love like Tex-Mex. Um, so mm. I'll be like heading to as many Mexican restaurants as possible. We just don't do Mexican in Australia properly. We just don't know how to do it. Like we don't know what we're doing. So that I'm really excited about. I love me some Whole Foods as well. So I'm pretty excited to, to shop at Whole Foods. And you've got a really good takeaway too. Like I love In-N-Out Burger and all this stuff. So I'm pretty excited for that. It's been years since I've had some good American food. Um, and, you know, the scenery and the, I love everything about there. You know, I grew up watching films and, you know, listening to music and, and reading stories about America. Um, so for me, it's like this sort of, you know wonderland that I get to go to and, and call you know my other home I guess and I I feel really at home there in a lot of ways and and you know you, it's weird you know there's so much adjusting you know you drive on the other side of the road mm. you know your, your money is different you know it, it, even like you we're in you know degrees celsius you're in fahrenheit like there's so many things that are you got to adjust to you know but I get it all because I spent so much time there, I guess. So it feels natural to me in, in a weird way. Um, but, yeah, I'm just really excited to come and play some music. You know, the, my favourite crowds are playing to American crowds. Um, so I'm excited to come back and, and, and do that again. So hopefully we get some people out to the show. And, um, yeah, I've never played in Lancaster before. So is that how you say it, Lancaster, or is it Lancaster? No, it, oh, this is a giant debate around here um yeah. it's lancaster like very lancaster short. lancaster yeah okay. lancaster okay got it yeah i'll it's... try and remember that when i get on stage because i don't want to get like beer thrown at me or <laughs> <laughs> I, I, will, I, will, I will give you an excuse but uh yeah but, you know it is pronounced lancaster um and <laughs> lancaster. speaking of lancaster she'll be at telus 360 right downtown on king street uh, August 21st at 6 p.m. Are you going to have an opening act or, or do you know? Or 
Yeah, I will have an opening act. Um, so I'm bringing over an Australian artist that uh, was just on our um, version of The Voice here in Australia. Hmm. Uh, he's doing really great things at the moment and he's made a great um, country EP uh, that I may or may not have produced. Uh, and he is a really talented guy. Um, his name's Colin Lilly. So he's coming over and opening up my solo shows um, for me all over the state. So he's fabulous. Americans are going to love him. Um, and then I'm performing with my partner, Bradley Bergen, who plays guitar. Well, he, his main instrument's drums, but he plays guitar in my band and sings harmonies and, and whatever with me. So, um, yeah, it's going to be really cool. And um, my favourite shows are just me and him, like just that stripped back storytelling and, you know, we have a lot of fun and it's you can kind of hear everything better, I think, when it's stripped back like that. So i um, pretty excited to, to do some shows to start because we normally tour with a full band here in Australia. So we don't get to do that very often. So. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, really, I'm really excited to hear some of your songs. Speaking of which. Thank you. We have some to, to showcase. Yay. So work, I want to talk about I'm a country song. What is that? What is that about? What, what was what was the 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 thought process behind that? All that good stuff. Yeah, um, so I wrote that one, uh, that's on my new record, Home Truths, and uh, I wrote it because I feel like when I listen to country music, I, <laughs> I often feel like, you know, the stories and the songs are about me, you know, like I think, mm-hmm. oh, God, is there something wrong with me? Like when I'm listening to, like, country music and going, oh, that's my life, you know, like that's sad but true. Like I feel like that happens to me so often, you know, um, and so that's kind of what the song's about. It's kind of based on my life. It's based on a couple of other people's lives, you know, as well that um, are around me. And I kind of took inspiration from a friend in particular. And, um, yeah, it kind of ended up being the first single off the album, which was really successful here in Australia. And um, we had a number one with that song. So, um, yeah, did great things. And with that said, this is I'm a Country Song by Catherine Britt.
And that was I'm a Country Song by Catherine Britt. I really like the composition process of, or the composition of that. So I'm a music composition major from my uh, college. I really enjoyed awesome. that. What was that like for you to bring uh, all that together? Was is that something that you do or is that a collaborative thing? Tell me about it. Yeah, it's something I do. I mean, when I write, um, songs I, I sort of produce them in my head and I can hear how they're going to sound so I produced the new album Home Truth um, and yeah I think you know that just has always come naturally for me because I've you know that's album number um, eight for me I think it's eight seven eight anyway something like that um, <laughs> and I think now I, I really know my sound and what I want you know like um when I write, I kind of, I already know what it's going to sound like. So, you know, yeah, I guess you could say that was me, but also I, I pick really great musicians, you know, I, I don't work with, you know, I, I try to work with the best and they know what they're doing. You know, when you get into the studio, um, you can, you kind of can rely and trust on, trust them to do what you need. Um, I think that's a lot to do with, with producing correctly, you know, choosing the right people to, to do that with you. So I've always been pretty lucky to work with some of the best. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, up next, we're going to play Country Fan. And that's uh, that was a collaboration between you and uh, who was it again? Lee Kernigan. Lee Kernigan. That's right. Uh, tell he's me like about our, that. Yeah, he's like our, I don't know, Tim McGraw of Australia or whatever. He's really? like, yeah, he's, he's kind of like the big um I don't know that the big male artist you know that's been around for a long time and um you know has a big fan base and he was really good to me in the beginning of my career um he took me under his wing and took me on the road and has always been so supportive of me and I love Lee um like a brother and um he actually got me to record a duet with him on his one of his records years ago when I first started out we did a cover of Love Hurts together the old Police and Boodle Bryant song and um, I loved it. And I always thought, man, one day I'm going to do the same and get him on one of my records. And I wrote this song, Country Fan, during the pandemic because I was doing Facebook Lives and I felt like country fans are just so passionate and they just, like, stick by you. Like, they just never give up. Like, they're always there. And even when I didn't tour for two years, I went back on the road and they were all still there. Like, they all still – I still had fans. Like, it just blows my mind you know how how people how country fans just are loyal like that and mm. I wanted to write a song about that you know it's as cheesy as it is I felt like it had to be said and I felt like Lee got that you know more than anyone because he's been doing this longer than me and he's still got a huge fan base and loves his fans and um yeah I kind of wanted I thought it'd be a perfect song to do with him so thankfully he said yes and we released it as a single and again it was another um hit for us here in Australia so it was it's pretty special Awesome. Well, with that said, this is Country Fan. Would you believe us? <laughs> this is the one. Bye. 
Country Fan by Catherine Britt and Lee Kernigan. So tell me, what was it like to uh, be able to be on the same stage or perform with like people like Dolly Parton, uh, like some of these like gigantic names over here in America? Uh, weird and surreal and special. And, um, you know, I've gotten to tour Australia with these artists as well. Uh, I did, you know, the Don McLean tour here in Australia and Dolly Parton and, Brooks and Dunn and um, you know it's been really cool to get to do those things um, these artists are some of the best that we have in the world and um, very grateful to to work with them you know um, and have that mutual respect you know I'm very lucky that they like what I do and and support me enough to take me on the road so um, yeah it's really it's really cool very cool. So I'm curious what was it like to get on to a-, a ABC show and a, like a CMC all country music program. What was it, be- what was it like to uh, go from like a songwriter to then like a, a, a personality on like a radio? Yeah. Weird. Um, we have this show here in Australia called Saturday Night Country, which is, uh, it's always been hosted by uh, an artist. And um, I was actually just filling in for a short amount of time while the artist um, was on, maternity leave and then it ended up being two and a half year maternity leave so I ended up sort of making it my own show and um it was great you know I actually really liked it because when I interviewed artists like you know I was interviewing my friends and and it felt really natural and and can't like um comfortable I guess for them you know to talk so they opened up a lot more and that was really cool and um then the, the tv show was really cool too because you know I had to sort of learn a different you know side of myself that you know tv and film is just so different to you know performing on stage or uh or you know even a photo shoot or whatever you know they're all different elements of what we do but that was really different again and I loved that experience of getting to you know host my own show and um play music I loved and introduce that to the world and um yeah it was really cool I'd love to do something like that again so who knows, you know, at the moment I'm just focusing on touring and being a mom and um, mm. that that's enough. You know, I, I do that full time um, touring and, and, you know, when I'm home, I'm, I'm mom to three little kids. My partner's got a one year old and I've got a two and a four year old. So we've got a hands full um, <laughs> and that, you know, really occupies us when we're home. And um, 
yeah, and then somewhere in there I, I run my business and write songs. So it's pretty full on. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. It's incredible how, well, tell me, what is it like to uh, do that, to balance the, the lives of your kids, your your partner, and to yeah. do your music? What, what things you have to take into consideration, especially coming on a tour into mm. America? What are some of the things that you got to think about? Well, I mean, I've always got to organize the kids. Uh, you know, obviously we're coming over there and doing a six week tour and, um, you know, that's work. So my children will be staying here in Australia and that's really hard, you know, having to process that stuff. They're still really young. They won't remember it, but mm. if, you know, I'm the one that's going to suffer, you know, I've never spent any real amount of time away from my children. So, um, you know, when I can, I take them on the road with me. Um, and, you know, usually we tour every weekend here in Australia, but that means we get to be home during the week which that means I get to do the, you know, the during the week stuff with my kids. So I don't miss out on much. Um, and I think I get to spend more time with them than most parents do that have nine to five jobs. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. lucky most of the time, unless I go overseas and do a tour. So that's when yes. I lose, you know, time with them. And, you know, when they're older, they'll come with me and, you know, it's, it'll get easier. Um, right now they're just too young and, you know, um, makes more sense to have them at home with their dad and, um, who's my ex-husband and um, he's a great dad and, you know, he loves having this extra time with them. So um, it kind of works, you know, I've got good support system here in Newcastle, all my family's here and all my friends, I grew up here. So um, we're pretty lucky, you know, that um, we can make that work and I'm able to do this and, and have my kids looked after and loved and, and safe. So That's awesome. I'm noticing yeah. some guitars back there. Are those your golden guitar awards? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's them. Yeah. What was it like to uh, win one? What was the process behind that? Uh, yeah, it's surreal, what is a golden guitar know? for for those who don't know? Uh, I guess it's sort of um, it's been described to me by Americans as kind of like your CMAs. Mm. Um, that that's our you know the CMAA major. That's our major awards here in Australia for country music. So you can't really get a higher accolade. Um, for country music in Australia. Um, the ARIA awards are kind of like the Grammys, I guess, gotcha. if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, I won my first one for my third album. So it took three albums. You know, I was nominated lots before that, but I never won anything until I moved back to Australia and, and Little Wildflower, that record, I had a song called What I Did Last Night. That was actually a single in, a, in America too, probably one of my biggest hits over there. And that's what won me my first golden guitar. So that I won Female Artist of the Year um, with that one. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have one of your songs from one of your most recent albums. And I think it's the headliner song, Home Truths, right? Yeah. Tell me that's about right, that. Yes. What's all that about? Yeah, well, Home Truths is written about um, you know, under like real love, I guess, love that um, is understanding, compassionate and can tell you the bad things about you without being like nasty mm. or judgmental. You know, I feel like that's what real love is. It's like being able to say to somebody, hey, are you okay? Like, I feel like you're struggling at the moment or, you know, you're doing this, you're drinking more than you normally would or, um, you know, just being able to say those hard things to each other and, and being able to hear it without feeling judged or misunderstood or whatever. And, you know, I'm really lucky I have that sort of relationship now. I, I never had that until my recent partner, Bradley. Um, I've always struggled in relationships and I've always, you know, been in and out of abusive relationships and, and things that just were really hard for me to function in well. Whereas now I feel like I can thrive and I feel like I can be, I'm supported and I'm loved properly. And, um, I'm very lucky, you know, that that sort of love comes only comes along every now and again. And I'm lucky I found it. So that's what this song is about. It's the title track of, of the new album, too. So. And then with that said, this is Home Choose by Catherine Britt. Sunday morning, no one wants to be heard. Run your nails down my backbone in your clean white shirt. You drag me through the fire 
while the coals are still warm It feels like love but I wish I never was born Give me those home truths Honest, straight, and hundred proof A little bit of sweet Cut you where it's deep And that's what I need from you Show me what love does With a lick of salt to kill the buzz no one else can say what leaves me feeling changed Hits me like a greyhound bus Give me those home truths Home truths yeah, I've been saying too much and speaking too It's deep, that's what I need from you Show me what love does With a lick of salt to kill the buzz And no one else can say What leaves me feeling changed It hits me like a greyhound bus Give me those home truths And that was Home Truths. What a special song, honestly. Thank you. Because I, I've, I've listened, I've, it's actually kind of been on repeat for me. Uh, as well, yeah, because uh, as the uh, stuff rolls on and as the pandemic has hit, you know, this is stuff you got to worry about with your friends. They've been isolated for so long, especially in the music industry where it yeah. crashed overnight. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, just having going up to your friend and saying hey are you are you okay yeah something absolutely do often. no and something we probably didn't really need to do as often before you know but now everything's so different and the world is such a different place to be living in and um you know you need those people that love you and care about you and uh, are the ones that reach out and ask if you're okay you know we're all struggling especially mm -hmm. in the music industry so it's nice to know that you've got people you can rely on, I guess, and that you can trust. And um, yeah, I've got some really great friends in the music industry and I'm very fortunate um, for that, you know, and I've got a very strong family and, you know, I'm very lucky. So it's good that, you know, to find those people, I guess, in your life so that you are safe and looked after and cared for. Yeah. So I've got some general questions here to wrap things up. What yeah. is one thing that you know now with all of this experience that you wish you had known when you first started? Oh God, <laughs> so much. Um, yeah, I guess 
I guess I wish I learned to trust myself more. Mm. You know, I was always so, um, I let myself be led very easily, mm. often by men or um, people in the industry. You know, I allowed myself to be bullied and, um, you know, I'm a very non-confrontational person and I think that people who are bullies or confrontational seek out people like me and take advantage. Um, and the music industry is like the worst place for that. So, of course. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I feel like I've kind of had a bit of a struggle with that throughout my life. You know, I've, I've gotten myself in some pretty sticky situations and, you know, um, all because I was sort of misled um, and naive and young. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's kind of something I've learned as I'm, you know, I'm in my 30s now and I'm a mom. So, you know, I have my head screwed on a little bit better, I think, than I used to in my 20s. And, um, you know, I still feel like I'm young enough to take advantage of it, but um, old enough to know better. Yeah. So, well, yeah. That's, that's a good one because that that, uh, that really tied into my uh, next question. Uh, what are oh. some of the biggest mistakes that maybe you've made or seen other people make in the industry and how can we prevent those or... Mm. I think trusting the wrong people, you know, I think for me, I, I allowed myself to, to trust people that um, took advantage of my trust. So, um, you know, I had some pretty bad management early on that, you know, didn't steal money from me, but misused money, let's mm. say. Um, and, you know, didn't, did things like didn't pay my taxes and stuff like that. That got me in a lot of trouble pretty <laughs> early on. Um, yeah. So music industry. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've been really lucky on the label front. I've always been signed to really lovely labels and I've always been taken care of. You know, even my my deal with RCA, they were so good to me. And when we finally ended our relationship, it was ended so nice. You know, it, it was lovely and that we're still friends to this day. I'm, I still talk to Renee Bell and Joe Galani from the label. And, um, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty lucky in that way, but I've definitely had management that has been awful, um, a lot of, management that has been awful awful over the years had a few managers um and that's probably my biggest um you know fail in that you know trusting those people that took advantage um but you know the other thing too is you know meeting people in the music industry you often end up dating within the industry mm. and you know the rumor mill is a is an awful thing um you know I again was misled very young by some just you know, idiots, really. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I kind of got myself into some trouble at young uh, ages and um, I look back now and just think, oh, how could I have been so naive, you know, but we make mistakes and that's what makes our life, you know, that's mm. life is it's not perfect. Hard. It's messy, yeah, and that's where I get inspiration for songs from and, you know, if it was perfect, I wouldn't write such real country music so <laughs> yeah, as i'll say yeah the country music is of the tortured soul isn't it that's exactly right yeah so yeah i'm grateful in some ways for my tortured life but <laughs> you know i've also been very fortunate i've got a great family and i've got beautiful kids and you know i've always had great people around me so i've been very lucky in a lot of other ways so yeah awesome. well i have one last question for you yeah uh, and on a lighter note what has been one of the funniest things that ever happened to you on stage at all? Uh, funniest things. Or maybe worst that you can like laugh back at now. Um, I don't know if this is like a bad thing, but I remember being really like shocked and embarrassed. But I remember I was playing on the Granite Opry one time and um, I knew that Vince Gill was on the bill as well like he was playing after me or must have been yeah must have been after me later in a later set and uh I, I was playing a song there's my alarm going off I was playing a song uh, an old country song actually I think it was Angel Band or something like that an old Stanley Brothers song and he walked out and started playing guitar like in the song and I was like like shocked like just so like I, I couldn't sing like I felt like I was like nailing it before that and then I felt like I just sort of stuffed it up from there <laughs> like I was like oh I've, I've got to be really good now I've been skill singing with me but um it was one of the best moments but also one of the most awkward moments you know, of my sure. life because when you see like really... one, of, one of your idols come out and start playing with you and like oh, yeah yeah, yeah. It's like, oh okay shivers now I gotta keep it together but yeah 
it is really special and I wish I had it on video like I wish I somebody had filmed it or something mm -hmm. but yeah it's just a memory for me now <laughs> well that's awesome and I hope you make some more memories when you come back to America this yeah uh, when did your first, when did your tour start I'm actually leaving in a few days so it starts on the 7th um so yeah I'll I'll be leaving on Sunday our time and getting over there Sunday your time um and then the tour kicks off on Tuesday I'm actually touring around for a couple of weeks with another Australian artist um Daniel Champagne who's a brilliant guitar player and um singer and uh and then I go out on a, a tour by myself which is starting with you guys actually you're the first of my solo tour so yeah And that's at Telus 360, 6 p.m., August 21st at the Sunday evening. And if you are listening from any other city, you can check out where she'll be on her website, katherinebritt.com. Yeah. And her uh, her Facebook page, same same thing, Catherine Britt yeah. Music. All the links are in the description. Catherine, it has been a wonderful time talking to you. Thank you so much for having me, Corey. I'm glad we finally made this work. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Pull the curtain back. It's Thank been, it's you. been, it's been a little bit of uh, figuring <laughs> took out technology, a, took a Australian yeah. time. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I, I hope to meet you when I come to Pennsylvania. That's right. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be the first, probably the first ones in the door. Because I'm that you've made a fan out of me already. Uh, be sure oh, to check awesome. her out on uh on that's that's August twenty first. Just to be sure you know, put it in your calendars. Uh, yeah. Check it out on Tell Us Their Events. They have it there. I'll put that also in the description. With all that said, if you have enjoyed this podcast, I hope you follow us on anywhere. Just search up The Story, Corey Rosen. We're on Spotify, all streaming platforms. And I hope you guys enjoy your, the rest of your night. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.